Hi everybody, this is the Aussie Fisherman Greg. Um, today I'm going to start doing a, a series of uh, videos, um, mainly to just teach people how to um, you know, catch crabs and, and how to uh, enjoy and, and, and to do things properly. Uh, when I first started um, uh, fishing, I've been pro fishing for four, uh, 45 years and my dad, he was a fisherman, so I've been around this game for a long time and um, so I should be able to hand a few of these little tips over to people. Um, when I first started, nobody would teach me anything. The wrecks of pros, you know, they used to, um, well, they were secret service. They wouldn't give you any information at all. Um, and when they died, their secrets went with them. So um, I don't want to be like that. I, any the stuff I've learned over the years, I want to be able to um, pass on and, and hopefully people will benefit from it. So, um, so let's get started. Um, the first thing I always suggest is to buy really good quality pots. You know, the like pots of them well made, uh, the stitching is really good, um, they've got re these legs fold back when you want to when you want to collapse them and, and carry them in the boat. Um, there's uh, uh, the reason why I like to buy good quality pots is because for two reasons they catch better, they last longer, um, and if you ever lose them, you probably uh, will go and look for them where if you buy the cheap ones uh, the people they lose them and they don't even bother going uh, looking for them because they know they can go and buy some cheap ones next week but the worst part about that is they turn into ghost spots once they they um, you can't find them and they catch crabs and fish and and they, and, and they just keep dying in there for years and and, uh, and that's why we call them ghost spots and that's one thing we sort of try uh, not to do and um, so today I'm going to uh, show you how to erect a pot now and what I use is this, um... okay now before I use the spreader I'll just show you, this is what we used to do years ago, why if I can get them and they'd be hard as anything and, and usually the, the harder they are the better the pot is anyway because it's, the, the meshes are really tight but it takes a lot to do it, you know, so with these spreaders, it's so easy. You just put the bottom on like that, lift it up, and put your leg in. That's one, one leg. I'll go the other side. And just do the four legs like that. Because when they're tight like that, the meshes, the crab, the crab pot's a lot better. So, now that's an easy way of erecting it. And now what I like to do is put it in one of these plastic containers. You get them at Bunnings or one of the places where it's just a pot plant tray. And you put it in, put your bait in and then put that in underneath. And you close it up. And then when the pot's down on the bottom of the ocean, if there's a little gully or something running through underneath there, the crabs get underneath and they'll eat it from under, outside and they won't, um, they won't <coughs> go in the pot if they can get a free feed from underneath. So that's the reason why we put those bait, bait, uh, bait trays in. Now, the next, the next part, what well, with these name tags, um, in the old days we used to just Right on with a, a, a Texan pen, and after a couple of trips, you know, it'd wash off. And uh, if uh, fisheries get you without the name tag on properly, they can uh, fine you. So what I do, I just get an electric soldering iron, plug her in, and write your name with it on the. Just you know, as it heats up, it just melts the plastic in around like that, and it's. It stays on there forever, and you don't have to worry about your name washing off, um, you know, off the off the tag. And I usually put the tag just 
close handy to the to where your openings are for your door and your and your bait box. And that way, if the fisheries come along, they can they can read it, and it's um, as soon as they pull the pot up, they can read it. So that's the best way uh, to put your name tag on. And um, <clears throat> in the next part is probably one of the most important parts is you always tie your crab pot rope to the bottom of the pot. And I just use a bow line like that. And the reason why I tie it on the bottom of the pot is when the pot's sitting on the, on the floor, uh, on the bottom of the ocean, and they're probably sitting in mud, you lift it straight up out of the mud as you're pulling it up. You're not, um, if it's tied on the top, the pot will dig into the mud and pick up the whole heap of mud and you fill your pot half with mud. So you're always better to just tie your rope to the bottom of the pot. And then I just um, like to put a, a uh, I usually just tie a knot like that and put your float on. And the same with the float, when you mark your float, you use the electric solenoid on as well so that the, the numbers don't wash off your, off your um, float, um, you know, because all these sort of things can um, be get you a fine. But another thing that's really important about the, this sort of rope that I've got, it's a, called sink rope, and there's a, there's, that's how you buy it in a big roll like that. Um, some people might only need six mil. I like to use eight mil because it's not so hard on your hands. Um, but the trouble, the best part about this is it it sinks. As soon as you put it in the water, it sinks. Where a lot of other ropes that you find on crab pots, they they float. And if someone's coming through uh, with their outboard, they get a tangle around their outboard and they run the risk of, um, you know, like uh, falling out of the boat or what, you know, or, you know, or, or they can um, cut the pot off and you lose the pot anyway. Um, so this sink rope, there's no mineral or anything in it. It's just somehow it just sinks once it's, once it's been in the water for a while. Um, and another thing that's really good is it's um, environmentally friendly because they don't tangle up turtles and because and, and, the turtles will hit those floating ropes and, um, and, and tangle it up and, and, you know, and that causes more grief to you know, the turtles. You know? So you're better off um, having these sink ropes where if once you put the pot down, the, the rope just hangs straight down and there's less chance of boat hitting it and less chance of turtles hitting it. So it's a really good thing to do. Um, that's about that's about all I can think of. I might just get back to the, the spreader because um, what we have to do now is oh, I'll just show you some of the characteristics that I like to, in a good crab pot. See how tight the meshes are. Um, see how the opening's only about 45, maybe uh, 40 to 45 mil opening. So the crabs can push their way in, but they can't come out. You know because what we used to call a crab pot with a big wide uh, funnel, um, we used to call them motel crab pots because we used to say that people go in, like it's like people, you go into a motel, have a feed, have a camp and then piss off in the morning and that's what happens with these crabs. You know, so we, we don't, uh, we don't like, if we catch them in, get them in the pot, we want them to stay in there. So, um, but that was, and all the sowing on these pots are really good sowing. They don't, um, you know, some pots I've bought, the, the sewing it lets go and you've got to repair them all the time. Uh, now, the last thing is, uh, these spreaders, this, to, to collapse the pot, it's so easy. Um, oh, one other thing is that these, are, these pots have got an excluder, so the small crabs and the small fish uh, get out. So that's already built into these pots, so it's a really good, yeah, so... See the little crabs can come out, and and, um, and and you don't have to. Uh, see a lot of times the small crabs will damage your big crabs, you know. So it's better for them to get out, and any small fish get out, and they don't die 
in the pot either, you know. And uh, these spreaders, um, I get them from a friend of ours, uh, uh, Iron and Bar. Uh, they make a lot of really good products, really sturdy stuff, and uh, just check them out. They're usually on Instagram or one of those, um, and they do really good quality stuff. But that's about all I can show you before we, um, uh, you know, before you take it to go fishing the next day or whatever. But um, that's how you get a pot ready um, before you go and, and hopefully next video I'll show you how to bait up and how to tie on all the trees and, and allow for current and all this other stuff. I'll, I'm trying to pass on some of my information that I've learned or my experiences that I've learned over the years and uh, so hopefully um, you'll learn something. Um, so uh, this is uh, Aussie Fisherman Greg signing off. See you up the creek.